Hi there. Uh, so we're a chartered architectural practice. Uh, in the case of Padlow College, we um, oh, lost one already. Uh, we are um, we were main contractors as well. We didn't trust anyone else to build it, and uh, we had a great pro bit like Sabine had a great amount of learning that uh, we benefited from as well. So I'm going to talk about the challenges of um, education versus residential passive house. Talk a little bit about the benefits of passive house in schools, some advice for certification and uh, material details and air tightness. <coughs> Hadlow uh, is, uh, is one of the best land-based colleges in, in the UK, uh, teaches farming and uh, land-based techniques. It's got a main, main campus, uh, it's here in Kent, uh, main campus just over the A26 there. Um, famous architects had put a building in a green field there and uh, it didn't get planning. So the college had come to me and said, can you put the application in? And I said, well, we should do it on a brownfield site. So the cow sheds there in the middle of the working farm that they do demonstrations on uh, looked very suitable to match the requirements, what the, what the client actually wanted. And it meant um, with some uh, better planning as well on how the students got to the site, uh, the planners were a lot happier. So um, we won planning and uh, proceeded to detailed design. This is the building here. Just take you around the building quickly. It's around the back. So specifically, really, it's for seminar and, and quality teaching space. See, it wasn't such quality teaching space before on the right-hand side there, uh, where they were, had the toilet and the port cabin and uh, somewhat cold uh, classroom in, in winter on the right there. Uh, and this is the new classroom seminar room. First certified educational building in the UK. Um, achieved air time is 0.34. Primary energy, which I always think is a bit debatable, but achieved uh, certification, no problem. Shortlisted for sustainable project of the year, under 10 million. So that's the uh, building overview. I'll talk through some of our learnings. What are the tricky things with education um, compared to residential? Well, ventilation especially and heat loads, overheating, uh, quality of space and form versus the PHPP wrestle and the area to volume ratio, especially in our case where we had planning constraints over um, story height. We uh, put the, uh, the building on a timer and adjusted flow rates to specific areas of the building. So students were only occupying the building between eight and eight and nine roughly. So we adjusted that and had pretty basic but uh, um, important controls so that people could easily control the amount of air into their rooms. Um, this is uh, heat, heat use, uh, heat pump use and uh, ventilation use down the bottom. So it's off at weekends, only on um, during, during uh, Monday to Friday and uh, it's operating as, as planned. It's, um, um, we designed the, we had a monitoring system in there which we didn't really um, it's very, it's very BREAM sort of related in that um, it's designed to allow students to understand the energy use, but actually we sort of missed the opportunity to really highly monitor, which we're doing now on other buildings, uh, to get really good data, which is for us just the Excel files are really the interesting bits rather than the fancy graphics, but um, it's, it's still been good. Um, Original, so through the design, we, uh, we designed the building originally uh, for NatVent. So uh, we modelled it in TAS and made sure that all our cross flows were right with Windows first. Uh, but actually we've designed it now. Uh, it, what, we, what we ended up doing was going for Passive House and MechVent purely, except at night, where we have actuators on the windows so we get free night cooling and that works uh, amazingly well. Uh, when we didn't have them on the building was getting hot in the summer and now it's fantastic, it really works. And also our principles were a um, super insulated, super insulated uh, external fabric and build in thermal mass internally. 
and that also worked with the construction schedule as well. I'll talk, talk through that as well. Um, we weren't convinced ourselves that uh, it was going to be bulletproof, so we uh, put in a, a ground source heat pump, which does cooling and heating. Uh, that is in the model, in the PHPP model, uh, but it's only, only uh, used very, very infrequently. So, uh, but, but it was uh, kind of part of our um, methodology to make sure we, uh, we covered everything. This was the green field that uh, another building was going to be built in, but we found a better use for it, and that was the uh, 400 metres of, of, of pipe. Um, and, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that. What passive house in schools, uh, it's a more comfortable environment. The building is easier to operate, um, and it's known that there's an increased student concentration. In Norway and Denmark, they've done quite a few studies, and uh, it's the lowest possible energy cost. These are the benefits that why um, the, the finance director uh, commissioned us to do to the building. I thought I'd just show you this, uh, this uh, minus minus 15 outside and this is one uh, small heater we didn't have a heating system working and uh, it's an even temperature of 15 degrees when we were working which is really quite a fantastic sort of uh, example of why a, a, a super airtight insulated building works you know so no heating system other than a site rad and uh, it was it was toast toasty inside um, this is why we filter air, especially on a working farm. This is after three months. Obviously, with the building, with with construction, there is in the in the usually the first ch air change is pretty is pretty rough anyway. But it's kind of nice to know the students aren't breathing this. That's one of our drivers. Uh, so here we just built in the thermal mass, uh, so medium density concrete block. Um, again, I mean, our, our, our principles in, in architecture really are that it's a fantastic space to be. That's where we want the students to like being there. Um, but then acoustics are pretty important as well. Material finishes um, and the triple glazing here have really helped. We've had tractors outside, seminars going on, and not, not a bother. Really um, still... Uh, excellent sound insulation. Um, involved in two schools last year, one eight million, one ten million. Twice the noise survey and the air pollution survey cropped up and said, uh, "Okay, you're going to need mechanical ventilation for heat recovery and triple glazing." So you're already some way there to pass a pass. Um, that's in a city school. So we spend a lot of time doing daylight modelling and then. Um, product modelling with, with lights, and that's really shown uh, to work. They, they don't even have the lights on at all, which is really nice. And it's sort of worthwhile when you spend the amount of time we did working out the, uh, the daylight and, the, and the, the, the sizes of windows and the, and the orientation, and then matching that with PHPP. And this wrestle that happens, and it is a wrestle, because you know in that seminar room, we had a huge north-facing light. That's not what you're meant to do in passive house. You're meant to keep your north-facing windows tiny, and big south face. And we were, we, we were damned if we, that was going to happen. We wanted good quality light. The students were really going to spend time in those rooms, and we wanted them to enjoy that time. So, um, but it, it's really paid off, as you see from the monitoring. Very little um, uh, man-made lighting. Really, it's just showing the. Um, the results from uh, studies around the world on uh, increased pupil concentration uh, in Denmark, uh, speed increase, uh, reaction time in Norway, um, in maths and reading in the US especially improved, and uh, that's sort of borne out as well in, in Japan, similar, similar results. So uh, what we found as a problem with natural ventilation is you can't measure it. If the wind changes, uh, you, you, know, you, can't, you can't model that really that well. Uh, whereas mechanical ventilation and flow rates, you can be guaranteed. And you can stand there at the end of a job and commission the vents, knowing that the students will receive a certain amount of air. And that's, that's, uh, that's pretty important from our perspective. Um, uh, and louvres as well are more and more expensive as sound attenuated louvres that are very difficult to, uh, 
achieve technically um, and, and on budget. Uh, advice for certification, really, from, from our perspective, is really educational with the client making sure they understand the difficulties we might face in the project. Um, have a pass-fast champion who can manage from day one to day end. In other words, that was us. We took, we took that on, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's having someone who can really champion that, that element of the project. Um, for architects to use and understand PHPP, don't just leave it to a consultant. It's, uh, you know, I think it's a fantastic design tool for you to really understand what the building's doing. Um, you don't have to certify it, you don't have to be the assessor, but understand what it's doing. Um, we actually have certified European Passfast designers in, internally, and uh, I, I'm a trained assessor as well, but uh, it's not the point. We went out to PhD in Germany to get it certified, and that was definitely the best way. Um, they were most experienced, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to be challenged back on our PHPP. And you have to work with a committed client and contractor. In this instance, we were architect and contractor and pretty committed, but uh, making sure the client was committed early doors as well. He'd seen his electricity bill go up 300% so, um, in, in the, in the form, form of three years to us being on site. So it was quite important to him. Uh, what, what else advice? We use um, Archicad, Revit's the same pretty much. Um, just in terms of accuracy of build and predicting that, uh, Sabine was talking about uh, panel logistics. Uh, we built, we put, we put a crane on site virtually and then uh, modelled how the panels would go, what sequence. That meant it was clockwork. We built the school, in three, the school building in three days and we were airtight to 0.34 in 10 days. And it just came down to planning. Um, but BIM, BIM scheduling, uh, so in 4D, uh, setting out how the building's going to get built, and cost control is fantastic, so uh, can't recommend it enough. And there's much fewer errors in BIM. Uh, that's, you know, I've worked in AutoCAD, MicroStation, Vectorworks, and finally something is not, uh, you can't trick it, which is, uh, which is brilliant. Uh, there's a few add-on benefits to that I'll talk about in a second. One of these is uh, solar modelling. Just very early stage, you can see what what you're building and the, uh, and the effects of it. And so this is solar modelling. You can run a movie, see what shadows you're creating and um, see the effect depending on time of year. And that's uh, just showing uh, as built. We built the ventilation system in, uh, in MEP as well. Um, that, that was really effective. The ductors were in in two days, no mess. We pre-built all the holes for the ventilation system and no mess and uh, they, they actually were quite surprised because they didn't they normally receive a plan and not quite sure yet and where their ducts are going to go but in this instance they're like wow oh, that's where it's going to go brilliant so it made their job easier some really interesting add-on benefits of uh, of modeling um, also obviously from an air tightness perspective we pre-built the holes for the in and out of the ventilation system there and um, those were the only punctures, the only apertures other than the windows and doors in the panels. So we could be really uh, guaranteed on our air tightness. Again, a little bit about Archicad, um, just detailing, makes things easier. Uh, Internorm have just released their, well, last year released their windows into Archicad. So they have pre-built windows which you can drop into your, your buildings. Um, just really handy from a PHPP perspective and correlation with that. We can output from Archicad directly into PHPP areas, volumes. It's a really handy tool. So, um, okay, thanks, John. Uh, I don't know where yeah, material details. Okay, so we used prefabricated timber frames. We have a relationship with a factory in Austria um, that guarantees us air tightness and good quality um, joints. And uh, I'm talking a little bit about cost as well. So this is the factory in Austria. Um, reduced thermal bridging and 
this is the biggest threat, really the biggest threat as a contractor moving into passive house building is, I think, I think is the air tightness and achieving air tightness. So we reduce that by using these frames. Uh, that's the day one, day two, day three, and airtight. Um, so we managed to get, much like uh, Sabine was saying, we got it over in seven lorries, uh, very small cost. The uh, factory is uh, on uh, renewable energy, so it's very low embodied energy, in fact, uh, relative to the emissions related to uh, diesel. BRE did a study saying that, uh, I think it's quite an old study actually, but uh, um, uh, they've said that uh, schools should be built 1711 pounds per square meter, including preliminaries and excluding a few other things. Um, we built Hadlow for less than 1500 including everything, so that's fees, landscaping, ventilation and heat pump. Um, not saying we could do that again, but uh, it, was, uh, it, it was good learning. Uh, and it shows it can be done, that's the point. Uh, why do we have such faith in Passive House? Uh, I don't know if everyone's seen this before, but it's, it really shows to me how far behind we are. This is 10 years ago, this research. Um, 220 units, uh, 14 projects across five, across Europe, five different countries. And um, the orange bars are the uh, typical standard house uh, energy requirements, annual heat um, uh, requirements. And uh, in blue is what's modelled with PHPP and in green what actual consumption. And the tolerance sort of plus minus 3%. This is why we have faith in PHPP, really, uh, because it actually achieves what it's meant to. I, I think an architect this year was sued for a school that was built two years ago because it's not achieving what it's meant to achieve with Brea. So we as architects are facing these issues that schools have to achieve and, and non dorm buildings have to achieve what they say they're going to. A part of our Fabric First uh, principle, just showing in the EPC, uh, A-rated buildings... Quite, quite common now, I suppose, but we achieve that with no renewables. So the point is, our, with clients, we're always encouraging that um, fabric first principle, the bits that last 60 years, that's, that's the bit to invest in because they can now add renewables and go zero carbon. That's, that's, that's our uh, thinking. I always want to say thanks to a few people. Uh, we had some great people involved. And, uh, yeah, that was my... Uh, six-year-old nephew's slide as well, after the mix.